Fala pessoal, noite Alvinegra no ar, nosso terceiro conteúdo nesta terça-feira. E novamente com mais um trecho da entrevista com John Textor. Vou colocar aqui mais uma parte das falas do proprietário do Botafogo. Nesta parte ele vai falar sobre os motivos dos rompimentos contratuais, além de quais os seus planos em relação ao novo fornecedor de material esportivo. John Textor abre o jogo de uma maneira muito boa, você tem boas aspas do proprietário Alvinegro, onde ele meio que planeja ali né, o que ele pretende fazer. Mas antes, vou falar aqui a notícia né, dada por alguns jornais argentinos a respeito de Oscar Romero. O atacante, que estava em negociações avançadas com o Botafogo, depois dessa espera do Glorioso ali para novas movimentações, ele recebeu uma proposta da equipe do Boca Juniors, está bem encaminhado para ser o um novo jogador da equipe argentina nesta temporada e na Copa Libertadores da América. Você vai deixar seu like agora, se você não for inscrito no canal, inscreva-se. Temos mais trechos da entrevista com, com o John Textor para eles entrarem aqui no canal. Na quarta ou na quinta-feira, entrevista na íntegra, meu editor vai conseguir estar tá trabalhando, tá tendo outro serviço, ele tá deixando algumas coisas de lado para poder é, nos entregar aqui todos os vídeos e eu espero que tudo dê certo para a gente colocar a, durante a madrugada mais um trecho, amanhã no almoço com o TF outro trecho, noite alvinegra outro trecho e para entregar tudo que foi falado pelo dono do Botafogo aqui no canal. Uh, you made an important announcement when you decide to stop the contracts of all sponsors. And what kind of sponsors do you expect for Botafogo? Are there uh, already some conversations going on? Yeah, well, one, I want to put in context exactly what that was. It's, it's nothing against those sponsors, the types of companies they are or anything. It's just we have a chance to start out with a, a blank canvas. And before we become what we want to become, We have to define who we are and we have to set goals for this club. We have to project that to the globe. Like if we want to become a global power in the world of football, uh, we need to start acting like it right away. And the most important thing we have, one, it's going to be happening on the pitch, on the field, but for everything off the field, how we convey our brand to the world, you know, how we appear, players, coaches, fans, you know, how we present ourselves to the world is how we begin defining the standards of becoming a champion. So I wanted to take this opportunity to clean the slate of all sort of contracts and relationships of the past that are not consistent with what we want to be in the future. Starting with the uniform, like what goes opposite the badge, our hearts. I understand what advertisers want, they want to be noticed. We may have great companies that are sponsors, but I have to sort of get out of these old relationships. Maybe with some of these sponsors, we enter into new relationships where we set the standards for the color, the size, and the placement of the logos that we allow to be opposite and to take advantage of sharing the front of the jersey with, with our badge. So. That's really all that was. It's just like resetting and going forward. In terms of what the uniform should look like, you know, look at the Premier League, look at La Liga, look at uh, Bundesliga. They don't have like 10 out like of a bunch of colors. piece of real estate, <laughs> yeah. right? It's about the club. You've got a big, big value on the chest. Your sponsor that gets the main shirt sponsor, you get a sleeve sponsor. You know, look at my company, uh, which is a sleeve sponsor at uh, Crystal Palace. Well, we get a lot of value out of that because the, the, the jersey is not loaded up with advertisements all over the front and the back. And we will end up having fewer sponsors on the jersey and maybe they pay a bit more. Now, every dollar or reais that we bring in to the club is going to go to the players and what we want to build, right? So I hope the fans support me when we do something commercial, when we try to make better uh, economic decisions off of our sponsor. I think we might actually sell more uniforms if we have fewer sponsors, because I want more people wearing the Botafogo jerseys around the world, outside of Brazil, thinking about us in Brazil. It may seem like I've given away a lot of money. I do have to pay a lot of cancellation fees. So it cost me a lot of money to do that yesterday. Mm -hmm. But it's really important for what we want to become. John, por falar em uniforme, o Botafogo há alguns anos teve essa camisa aqui. É você como uma pessoa que é ligada ao futebol, conhece várias camisas. Como você avalia esse uniforme que o Botafogo teve há alguns anos? Somebody sent that to me on Twitter, and I couldn't believe there was an actually a price. The price, yeah. Right. And the price had changed. 
<laughs> yeah. the, the the price changed the uh, the first half to the second half. It's no, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, the team <laughs> I swear going at halftime and changed their jerseys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that I think it was uh, our nightmare, like a uh, yeah, yeah. wearing a, a Botafogo shirt. Look, you really you want to ask your sponsors to respect who you are and what you're trying to convey, and so you want to get logos where the color is if not white or black it's with another color that works well with white or black and we will ask our sponsors to conform to our standards not the other way around and we will not expect our players to be you know advertisements we expect our players to be players até o brasileiro você já espera John ter pelo menos um fornecedor de material esportivo na nova camisa do Botafogo we don't have the urgency that other clubs have that I need the money in by a certain date. Um, you know, this first year is going to be very expensive just to transition. We want to put our money towards the squad. You know, we're looking at a number of situations in terms of the new uniform supplier. We want to get shirts available to the fans to wear. Bringing a whole new supplier in this late is going to be uh, difficult. So, you know, I do have relationships with some very big companies that will be given a chance to look at this. One of my partners, for example, owns uh, Reebok and he's a shareholder in Eagle Football, one of my true, true partners in football. So, you know, certainly I'm going to ask them what their thought is. They're not in the football business right now, but they're thinking of re-entering. So maybe they could do so with us. You know, Reebok was purchased from Adidas. So uh, our relationships uh, there are quite good. Same with uh, Nike and Puma and others. You know, it's uh, it's quite possible that my focus in the early going, yeah, we could end up doing our own thing, private label under the Botafogo brand until we find the right relationship going forward and do some fun special edition kind of uh, shirts for the fans that people would enjoy that are almost, imagine that, a, a limited edition jersey that really reflects this moment in time when this transition into a new era began. So we could have some fun with that, but I'm not going to rush a commercial decision because we need money to show up at a certain time. I'd be happy to see the entire team dressed in ballerina outfits if they just win a championship, right? I mean, it's about the football. It's not about anything else. And so we have to get that right first. We have to invest in the players, have to invest in the team. And yeah, we'll probably have identified our, our, you know, significant supplier, one of the big brands that fans will like. But if we identify them in time to avoid disruption of uh, shirts available for the fans at the beginning of the season, you know, that it's going to be difficult. We have a lot to do in February and March to get this done. It's very hard to do. But I wasn't given a chance to make this decision earlier. You know, I was only given that chance to make that decision this week. And all the advice would be, don't change. My God, the season's there on April 1st. And uh, I'm sure they're perfectly nice people there, but but they didn't line up with our strategy going forward. And so I had to change, even if it means it will be late on some things as we start the season. É isso, meus amigos. Na minha interpretação, o Textor ele vai fazer uma camisa tampão, como aconteceu em 2012, antes do Botafogo assinar com a Puma. Vocês, não sei se vocês se lembram dessa camisa aqui que o Botafogo teve, é, sem fornecedor. A camisa já era da Puma, mas era uma camisa de transição, então não aparecia a logomarca. Depois, eles fizeram uma camisa para o Botafogo. Se o Textor acha que essas movimentações podem ser mais úteis para o Botafogo, eu concordo com ele e, na minha opinião, tem que ser assim. É isso, meus amigos. Comentem aqui o que vocês acharam desta parte da entrevista. Mais tarde tem giro de notícias, depois almoço com o Tef. E amanhã, 11h30 da manhã, estarei no Charla Podcast. Então participem. Com certeza eu vou falar sobre Botafogo. Lá a galera vai querer saber algumas coisas sobre Botafogo. Também falar sobre profissão. Vai ser um papo bem bacana. Vai ser uma resenha com a galera do Charla. O maior podcast do Rio de Janeiro. Conto com vocês amanhã. Espero vocês amanhã também lá no Charla Podcast. Beijo, tchau, tchau e fui. Tamo juntos. Fogo neles. Valeu. <música>